Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we're back, and it is June the 25th, and I apologize ahead of time if I sound like I have a cold. I have a cold. You do indeed. Yeah, I did. It's one of the wonderful little gifts that you get from children from time to time. Courtesy of summer camp. Yeah, exactly. So thank you very much, Zoe, for bringing home some plague. (laughs) She has it, and Nana has it, and so far I am the sole survivor. That's good, because you need to take care of all of us, because none of us are used to being sick. (laughs) I know. know. (laughs) Well, so Julie, what is the topic today? We're finishing up what we uh, we started yesterday, or the day before. Yes, we're continuing the top 10 reasons agents don't walk away with the listing when they go on a listing appointment. Now, yesterday we started with point number one, which was you assumed it was yours and you were lazy in your presentation. And I have to say, Tim, I had so many comments from coaching clients, listeners, podcast listeners, emails and texts saying, OMG, I can't believe I've become that lazy with people who I actually know. And this really hit home with them. And several of them actually uh, sent me emails saying, I now know how lucky I was that I actually did end up with the listing, but I can see that sometimes I may make that mistake and not end up with the listing because somebody will sneak under the radar and even a couple of them confessed that they hadn't even sent their pre-listing package and they skipped pre-qualifying because they were assuming that everything was just going to go easy peasy and you know what sometimes you're lucky and it does but on the times where it doesn't boy do you guys kick yourselves on those as you should you know the way to think of your real estate business when you're operating it like julie and i coach you to as a system basically especially on the listing side is similar to walking into say for example a dentist's office or any kind of professional's office they don't you don't just walk right in there and start basically talking with whoever it is there you're you're there to see generally speaking you're going through guess what some pre-qualification you know they're gonna have take your insurance information they're gonna check your insurance if it's medical and find out if you can actually you know pay even if you go to a new hairstylist yeah they make you fill out some stuff you know do you have any allergies because some of the shampoos have allergies right they don't just sit down and start working on you it's normal to pre-qualify when you're a professional well ex- the last word julie just said that's the key word so it's normal to pre-qualify it's normal to put people through a process if you're professional so here's the subconscious little takeaway all of you should be having if you know that's the normal process that you have to go through a pre-qualifying you know, of some variety to work before you actually meet with a professional so do all your clients and if you're not acting like all the other professionals on planet earth act aren't you basically telling those prospective clients that you're not professional? Yes, you are. So having a professional system that you filter and sort people through, asking questions about motivation, frankly, just following our, our listing system exactly, that's going to make it so that if that, literally that alone will make it so that you are, you've risen above all your prospective competitors because you have, you know, essentially followed a professional process and that is going to subconsciously let that seller, its prospective seller know that guess what? You're the professional. And versus all the Pop-Tart agents, versus all the agents that basically walk in late wearing flip-flops and don't even have a listing presentation. That's okay. the that This is one of the best, <laughs> frankly, advantages you have in the real estate industry is so many of your competitors aren't professional, have no inkling of what it means to be professional. And so for you to rise above all the others, even if you're a brand new agent, if you just act like we prescribed for you to act in our coaching program and our book, Harris Rules, if you follow the system that we've created for you, even if you are have no sales underneath your belt, even if you have no real you know, vast experience, don't even know the market that well, you just follow our system, you're going to take that listing because even the agent who's entrenched in that marketplace is going to show up probably late, show up, show up probably not being prepared, not having pre-qualified. You guys get it? That's the difference between following a system and essentially winging it. And I'm here to tell you as well, well, the, a lot of the agents that you are threatened by as a new agent or even as a grit and say, for example, you've been in the business for a while, but you've never felt like you could be competitive enough to compete against the more experienced listing agents. The more experienced listing agents are generally speaking the most complacent. The most assumptive. Right. They take the business for granted. So even if you've been in the business for a long time and you've just picked up listings here and there and been focusing on uh, buyers, again, I'm here to tell you it's easier, especially in this market, to be a listing agent than it is to be a buyer's agent. If you don't believe me after your past, what, 
going on probably 18 months of having your uh, butt handed to you in the market from all this the, the ridiculous competitiveness of this market uh, mm. and you know essentially making it so buyers agents are uh, and, and so much unneeded uh, buyer to be a buyer's agent right really. right to be a buyer's agent voluntarily in this market when you know you could be a listing agent is an exercise in futility it just is it is it's almost malpractice so, okay so guys by the way why haven't you joined our coaching program yet I mean obviously thousands of you have but why are you waiting you know what we're saying or you would be listening to this podcast every day is true the easiest thing for you to do now, the thing that makes the most sense, and by the way, you have six months left this year. You still could make this your best year ever. You could still ha be uh, rolling into 2022 carrying all kinds of listing inventory. And by the way, also, we're coming up on one of the best times ever to go after expired listings. It's the end of this month, the beginning of next month, because it's a long 4th of July weekend. And if those of you guys are new to Julie and I, it's what we call expired palooza. Expired palooza, it only happens a few times a year. It's when the end of the month and the beginning of the following month roll over a holiday weekend because most agents and brokers, wrongfully, by the way, set their listings to expire at the end of the month and the beginning of the month. And if you, if you um, are... Uh, pros uh, prospecting, proactively lead generating expired listings during that time frame, you're going to get a lot of people are in good moods, a lot of people are home, sellers, right? And your competitors, agents are all at the beach or wherever, and they're not actually working. Expired Palooza is on in less than a week. So take that seriously. And here's all you guys have to do to, uh, uh, frankly, you still have time to, you know, download our uh, pre-listing kit. You have time to download the pre-qualification script. You actually have time between now and the end of the month to get your act together with regards to becoming a listing agent, at least have the process started, but you can't delay. Go to timandjulieharris.com, timandjulieharris.com. Click on coaching, and the first option is Premier Coaching. You can join Premier Coaching for around $100 a month. Go to timandjulieharris.com, click on coaching. Premier Coaching is what you're after, and you can join Premier Coaching for as little as $100 a month. Don't delay. Just go there now. If you want us to just text you a link, we can do that as well. Just text uh, the word success to 47372. Text the word success, S-U-C-C-E-S-S, -S -S, to 47372. Case in point, coaching client Christine, California agent, goes to a listing presentation, okay? Because she's trained with us, she does actually use a pre-qualification script, send a pre-listing package, and knows what she's getting into. Okay, she's, not, she's competing with not one, not two, not three, but six other agents, two of whom you would call very much heavy hitters, like top two or three in uh, Los Angeles. Okay, so she's maybe not thinking she's for sure going to get it. She dots the I's, crosses the T's. By the way, when you have a yes. seller that's interviewing six different people, that's kind of a wackadoodle seller, just <laughs> the like record. Early warning that's sign not a normal seller. That. That, that's a seller that really likes spending a lot of time with realtors, which right there is a warning sign, just <laughs> the record. Yeah. Exactly. Totally. Okay, but, but the point is that she knew, she had asked questions, she knew she was competing. She asked pre-qualifying questions, knew their motivation, their time frame, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so stiff competition. She ends up taking the listing. She asked them why, okay? They said, you are the only one who asked about what was important to us. That's what they said. That's awesome. They even said, you didn't even give us the highest price, but you're the only one who bothered to ask us any questions. So I think that kind of demonstrates our point here. Okay, so the point number one was that you assumed it was yours. You were lazy in your presentation. Good way to lose it. Number two, you didn't know that you were competing for the listing. And this is a result of not using a pre-qualification script. If you don't know whether you're competing or not, you are at a disadvantage. You should almost always go last in the lineup because that's generally closing position. But the way you present is going to be different if it's you versus their best friend, right? Or you versus the agent that sold them the house that's only a buyer's agent. Or you versus a commission cutter. It's nice to know, wouldn't you say? Or even an I buyer for that matter. Absolutely. So two thoughts. And don't let me forget sure. the second one. So the first thought is, is in the pre-qualifying script, in when you're reading the script and you're getting the questions answered, you're going to ask if they're interviewing other agents. Mr. Seller, most times when people are interviewing me, generally speaking, they're uh, having me uh, interviewing me to come out just to list the property. Were you planning on speaking with any other agents? And if they say yes, then you want to get as much information on who they're interviewing as possible so you can prepare for the appointment. And yes, I do need know. I am talking about the agent's names. All right, so now I'm going to go down a third tie right sure. here. So you want to know who you're competing against so you can go to the MLS and you can actually research finding out if these other agents are actually successful at all in selling listings. And you need to have that information so you can share it with the seller, assuming you're successful selling listings, so that the seller then can actually have a real comparison based on yep. numbers. And that comes out in our seller survival guide. But the way you position yourself, and it is an advantage, is to go last. Now, if you're competing against two or three other agents, and if they're good closers, which in case in, in the case of the gal Julie just talked 
talked about, obviously she was competing against two great agents and she still won is you want to always go last and, but you got to make sure you ask, you kind of basically pressure the seller to not list with any prior, anyone prior to meeting with you. Um, that's the risk of going last is somebody could close the, uh, close on the listing and you could get, um, never even get to the house. But you wouldn't know if you didn't ask. Right. So once you know that you're competing against other agents, you, and this is all in the script and I'm not getting this right. Remember I'm on day quill, so <laughs> forgive me. Okay. But um, what you say is Mr. Seller, listen, I appreciate the fact you want to interview the other agents. Um, so when do you have your appointments with them? Okay. So you have one today at four o'clock and you have another today at seven o'clock, right? So let's do this. I'll be over at your house tomorrow at four o'clock, but I want you to, and this is, this is in the script, but you can change this, whatever you're comfortable saying. Now, Mr. Seller, it's really important that you get the other agent's uh, opinions and you can, that way you have a basic comparison. I want you to compare apples to apples versus apples to oranges when you're talking with me. And remember, I'm sending over a pre-listing pack and that pre-listing pack is going to be the seller survival guide. A seller survival guide is a list of questions that you can use when interviewing other agents. So please use those questions. That way, when we get there, we can just basically focus in on what's what matters most to you and move forward. But Mr. Seller, I want you to promise me uh, something. And guys, I'm just summarizing here. This isn't just one big, long talking blob in the script. Obviously, it's more questions. But this is, the, this is the gist of it. Mr. Seller, I want you to promise me something that you won't list with anybody else until you meet with me. And what I used to say when I listed real estate, and I know a lot of other clients do, is I would jokingly say, I want you to swear in a stack of Bibles that you won't list with anybody else until we have a chance to meet. And then, they, then I would, you know, throw but, out. But they laugh. And right. when somebody laughs, you're kind of bonding with them a little bit. Yeah, exactly. They, they have a favorable memory of you. You know, it, but, remember the saying is how do you make them feel? Yeah, so exactly. you're leaving it with a good feeling. But what, what, so what, what are the moving parts there? The moving parts there is we're going last because then essentially the problem with not going last is the seller is going to say, no, okay, now I'll give you guys another advanced script. Damn, this day is working for me. <laughs> so I'll give you guys another script. Let's say, for example, you set the appointment and you thought you were third. And then this, for some reason, and this usually happens um, with a, a married couple, you know, Susie, the hairdresser, basically uh, somehow was able to get in a listing appointment because, you know, Betty, the homeowner, was getting her hair done and she felt obligated to Susie. So now there's somebody coming in after you. So you're sitting at the table. You've now essentially the seller has decided you're on the same page as far as uh, price, as far as marketing. They decide they want to move forward with you. But their excuse to not um, sign the listing paperwork with you is they've already made a commitment to meet with. Was it Sally or Betty? I don't remember. One, the Some hairdresser, agent. right? The, the fourth agent. Yeah. And so here's what here's the script. And again, this is a consolidated version of the script. Mr. Seller, um, may I t can I tell you why that might be actually a bad idea that you interview uh, Sally after you've decided that you're going to move forward and we're going to work together? And they're going to say, why? I, I said, I appreciate the fact that you feel obligated um, to meet with her because you've already made the appointment. And maybe you guys are friends with her or whatever, whatever the connection is. But you actually, you might find that that actually is going to work against us. Um, and can I tell you why? And they're going to say yes and say, well, it's because to prepare for one of these appointments, it can take up to, you know, three or four hours. And that's not even a, accounting for maybe she has to hire a babysitter. She has to, you know, there's all kinds of inconveniences that are associated, right, with breaking her normal schedule. So she's going to come over here. Maybe she spent, by the time she got here, she spent four hours uh, preparing, maybe less, uh, and she had to hire a babysitter. Who knows what kind of obligation she's got wrapped up in this thing at this point. So you've already convinced yourself and you already, well, not convinced yourself, but you already know you're going to list with me, but you're just doing it as, as a favor to her to basically go over and meet with you about listing her, her, you know, your house. So she's going to be there. She's going to then, you know, have wasted all this time. And, and then you're going to you know, tell her with the bad news that uh, you're going to list with me. And then the next thing we're going to have basically made an enemy in the marketplace. So here's what I propose. And this is, and guys, this really, really does work. Let me cancel the listing appointment with Sally. I'll cancel the listing appointment with Sally, and but here's what we'll do. Um, and then she gets her afternoon back. She gets her time back. And then what we'll do is we'll make it so that if she has any prospective buyers for the house, she can bring them in first. So Sally essentially is going to have a jump on the market so we can still work with Sally. We keep Sally. You keep Sally as a friend. You keep Sally so there's no awkwardness between you. Um, and then we can all move forward. Does that make sense? And there, and I'll tell you when this absolutely works where you vol volunteer to cancel the appointment with the other realtor, uh, they're actually going to thank you. They're going to be relieved, actually. You're, you're going to be surprised. I know this. The, some of you are thinking, oh, that will never work. It really does work because they don't want to meet with you. <laughs> they don't want to meet with those all, all those other agents. They sure as heck don't want to meet with this other agent. They're just doing it out of obligation. And they certainly don't want to say no to that person when they already know it's probably not the right choice. So instead of leaving that agent disappointed and kind of pissed, 
you're prioritizing them. If she has any buyers, she can be the first one to show it. That's right. And they'll say yes. And then you basically nicely, respectfully cancel the other appointment. Now, when Julie and I sold real estate in uh, New Albany, there was two agents primarily that we compete with. And um, I mean, I should say, I'll boastfully say that we never had our appointments canceled on us because they weren't able to close, but we did cancel a lot of their appointments because the sellers decided to list with us. I know that sounds like a being a braggart. No, maybe that's I, true. maybe I, I am. I was there. Yeah. But I really, actually, it was really kind of fun, you know, yeah. because they were, they were very successful in their own right, for sure. That's true. But that's true. the reality of it is, is when you follow a system, when you're following your pre-qualified fit system, when you send the pre-listing pack, when you're actually acting like a professional, you're doing the seller a huge favor. And well, obviously, by the way, you're doing yourself a favor as well. The seller, you guys got to be clear about this, doesn't want to meet with you. Doesn't want the stress of having you in their house. Doesn't want the stress of having to put the house for sale. Much less three or four more of you. <laughs> right. Now I'm going to throw this out there too. If you are in a marketplace, which many of you are, where you're competing against these I buyers, I'll just bottom line it and be direct with you and please don't be offended. You're going to have to seriously consider whether or not the brokerage you're with is going to be relevant in the future if you're if one of your regular competitor, competitors is going to be an I buyer. Um, you know, what are the what, different names? Um, my then Dayquil's dumbing me up. You mean like um, instant offers? No, no, Zil open Zillow's door. deal, open door and Zillow offers, offer pad. Or what I, offer pad, right? So if you're in a market where you're competing against those guys on a regular basis and you don't have your own uh, brokerage based I buyer program, you're going to be at a disadvantage. You cannot have the objection handler be, I'm sorry, we don't offer that. That's right, or you'll lose. So if you're competing against, uh, you're competing for a seller, a listing, sorry. I'm going to blame the Dayquil. And you are in a situation where the seller is uh, saying, well, we have this other offer from, you know, OfferPad or whatever, and they're offering to basically buy the house for maybe even, you know, a lot less than what the house would net for if you were to retail it, but they don't care about the net as much as they care about the hassle or the perceived less hassle of basically wholesaling the house to this iBuyer. And you don't offer that same thing, you will not get that listing because the seller has already told you that they put uh, their they put more value on convenience than they do on the net. Yeah, and I know time that is more important than money for some people. And well, and if you have a ton of equity and you're selling in this inflated real estate, you know, or inflated you know time of inflation, sure. basically, you probably do want to move fast because you don't want to lose the next house that you're moving towards, right? You guys have to be clear in your head that the thing that's most uh, important to the seller is almost never the net. They might tell you that, but it's the convenience and the hassle, especially if, frankly, they're selling their own personal house. Investors, it's going to be the, it's going to be the bottom line money that they make. Well, and again, all of this winds us right back to the pre-qualification script. Okay, so when you're pre-qualifying and using the pre-qualification script, you're going to determine that you are competing against an iBuyer. You have to be working with a brokerage that offers an iBuyer. And the only one that I know of is eXp Realty. With eXp Realty, when you become, um, again, I, again, Dayquil is dumbing me, but I don't remember the term. Express you, offer. Thank you. Express offer certified. You, Julie and I share a brain. Um, fortunately, <laughs> hers isn't dumbed down by Dayquil. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. sticking. Right. No, I think you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you are not working with a brokerage that offers an iBuyer, I think you guys can clearly see that you're going to lose listings because the sellers are going to put preference on just selling it directly to you know Zillow or Opendoor or whatever. This is going to be happening more than you think, especially in the hottest real estate markets. Zillow, I'm sorry, as an eXp agent, you can actually become certified to offer your own through eXp Realty. So when competing against one of the iBuyers, you can actually offer the exact same thing using, you can basically not be at a disadvantage because you don't offer an iBuyer program. You offer one as an eXp agent. I don't, again, I don't know of any other brokerage that are doing that. And here's the cool part. If, for example, that seller just wants to basically, I call wholesale, but you know, that is basically what it is. Convenience price. Right. If you want to sell that, if they want to sell the house instantly to express offers via eXp, you get the commission selling it to the express offers uh, investors. And then when the investors fix the houses up, you get the listing again. That doesn't happen with any of the other iBuyer programs, guys. Nope. So there's no downside when you're talking to one of these prospective sellers to encouraging them in some cases to use the express offers program, assuming you're an eXp agent, which all of you need to seriously be considering coming an eXp agent. And yes, Julie and I are associated with eXp. Um, and yes, we would love to talk with you about being your sponsor at eXp. And the easiest way for you to do that is just text me directly. And this really is my cell phone number. It's funny when people text me and they I say, know. is this really Tim? Yes, you know, my new joke is saying, no, this no. is not Tim. This is the AI Tim, Tim bot. AI. It's the Tim bot, right? Uh, just text me directly at 512-758-0206. 512-758-0206. If you're ready to join eXp or looking for more information, just text me directly at 512-758-0206. 
Yeah, and so the express offer through eXp is good for not just the seller, but also for you, the agent, because you actually retain the listing. So this is all good. All right, ready for one more point? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so number three, you didn't know the price the seller had in mind before you showed up. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean they're right about their price, but you should at least know what's going on in their pricing brain before you present your comparative market analysis. Many times, especially in today's market, sellers know about let me sales the that were not in the MLS. Right. So let me give them the script. Yeah. And again, guys, this is a script derivative. This isn't actually what we teach you as part of the coaching program. So Mr. Seller, so I'm going to be spending quite a, a bit of time, maybe a couple hours working on your CMA. A, a CMA is essentially um, a realtor's version of a, an appraisal, not an appraisal, but similar. So when doing the CMA, Mr. Seller, what uh, comparable properties, what properties have you seen sell um, maybe recently going all the way back to a year that you thought were similar to your house? Maybe you saw them at a, you know, a block party or a Christmas party, or maybe you were just, you know, a garage sale, who knows what. What properties in your neighborhood have you seen sell in the last, say, 90 days, six months, maybe even a year that you thought were most similar to your house? Now, I'm going to give you guys how this is going to, they, uh, 99% of the time, they're going to have their own comps in mind. Because everyone's real estate junkies nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I, everyone's a real estate voyeur, right? So they're going to know what things sold for. And all the comps that they're going to use, they're going to think their house is superior then. 100% of the time. Don't worry about it. Right. So, so you're, they're going to rattle off the properties. Maybe they know the addresses. Maybe they don't. But what I want you to listen for are the numbers that they're using. And they'll actually then basically start talking like as if they'd done their own CMA in their heads. Now, it, you'll say, well, this one sold three doors down. It sold 90 days ago. And then you could say, well, in your opinion, how does that one compare to yours? And you might want to let them know that you remember the house. Maybe you're looking at it in the MLS as they're talking, um, you know, so that you're not you know, exposing yourself to be ignorant about the market. So they'll say, well, that one had a bigger backyard or smaller backyard. That one had a remodeled kitchen. My kitchen is original, whatever. So you're going to go and write these things down. And you're what you're really looking for uh, is to the seller's mindset about price. And you will quickly discover that the seller is going to say, well, this one sold for six fifty, this one sold for six twenty five, and this one sold for seven twenty five. So you already know with the range in which the seller's thinking. At yeah, that and point. you're also looking for things that maybe weren't on your radar because you know maybe there was a probate sale, maybe there was a friend deal right. that went on that is in, indeed. Well, that a would comp. be, but that would still be yeah. in property records. But you're saying the seller won't necessarily a privy to it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you're you're basically uh, lining your comps up, and you're getting into the seller's head. To your point, when they when they inevitably come in at a higher price than what you think is right. Your, your job is not to argue with them, especially no. during the pre-qualification script. We it's to say that's interesting. That. That's interesting. How did you arrive at that price? Because, you know, maybe they've got a price in their head be from an appraisal two years ago. Maybe it's actually low. Maybe it's because, you know, they, they don't understand the impact of a four-bedroom well, versus three-bedroom. Let's talk about two things. Yeah. So one thing with what you just said, of mm -hmm. course it's true, but what we're not taking into consideration are the, uh, essentially, you need to be pricing to the market that will come, yeah. and that's different. So totally normally different. when you're pricing properties, you look at sold comps. That's what an appraiser is going to use. But when you're pricing properties as a real estate person who's going to be retailing a property, you price the house to the market that it's becoming. Otherwise, you won't get the listing. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what's more. What do I mean by that? So if you have a bunch of sold comps that say the house is worth, you know, 600 grand, w locked in 600 grand, but you know the inflation in your market for housing is up to two or three percent per month. And another agent that's uh, frankly a little bit more craftier than you then tells the seller that the house, uh, Mr. Seller, when are you planning putting this house for sale? Or ideally, when would you want this property sold? Well, I want the property sold uh, in the next 60 to 90 days. Okay. So that means, and then you work the time frame backwards. I'm not going to get into that script, but you guys get the gist of it. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Join the coaching program and you will. <laughs> but then what you do, you're going to need to do is you need to price the house to the market that's going to become. So in other words, if the houses in your market are inflating in value, and you can just, there's a bunch of different ways you can figure that out, by 2 or 3% per month, and you're using sold comps that are 90 days old, chances are you're going to lose that listing because the another agent is going to know the market better than you and say, well, there's a sole comp for 600, but if we're planning on putting this house for sale in the next 30 days, the chances are the market's going to be worth as much as you know 618, 615 then. So let's price the house at 619 That's nine. Right. So here's the big takeaway. Never lose a house, never lose a listing, especially in an insane seller's market, to price. That's never right. lose it to price. And Julie said something else. I don't know if you guys are listening. And this should be, it probably is one of your rules. <clears throat> Might be. Never argue with a seller about price in a seller's market. Do not say my price. Do not say the CMA. Do not say my CMA. Do not act like you're the all-seeing 
you know, Oz with regards to housing pricing, because you are not, and you could be wrong. And especially you, if you have little to no competition, right? And you're gonna under, you're gonna spend all this time and be overly analytical and act like you're some sort of pricing badass. This is, by the way, a rookie mistake. And you're gonna go in there and try to do battle with the seller over price, and your ego is gonna be all like my price, your yep. price, and you're not gonna get the listing. And somebody else who's uh, licensed uh, just basically got issued, you know, seven minutes ago, is gonna walk in there, tell the seller the price is wherever the seller thinks the price should be, and then it sells forever that price. And who's right? You're gonna say, well, they overpriced it. No, you were just wrong, and your approach to basically talking yep. with that seller about because the price. Because the market determines the price. That's okay? right. If somebody was willing to pay what you perceive to be too high. It's not about you. It's about what that buyer is willing to do. And that becomes the next comp. So you have to be really careful about that. Now, caveat to this, we are talking specifically about a hot seller's market where there is little competition. So let's give them the caveat, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you're talking with the seller, I can't believe I'm remembering all these scripts. <laughs> when you're talking with the seller and you're overpricing it, and maybe you're getting you know, a little queasy because you know you're overpricing it, take the damn listing anyway. That's rule number one in a market like this. Yes. Rule number two is this is what you say. First of all, strike from your vocabulary words like lower price or my price. Never use personal pronouns when you're talking to people as a general rule because personal pronouns, my, I, will always offend people. Do make a habit of actually trying to remove those from any kind of conversation with anybody. Well, they're ego words. Basically. They're ego words, right. And they subconsciously turn people off, especially when you're talking with sellers. Um, that bug's flying around your elbow. I'm going to get him. <laughs> I know. So when you're talking with these sellers, and when, we're in per when you're in Puerto Rico, there's bugs all the time no matter where you are. Um, when you're talking to sellers, you say, Mr. Seller, listen, I understand. I'm going to give you three or four really important things here, guys. Mr. Seller, I understand why you feel your house is worth, um, say the comp, say 600. Let's say the inflated comp, say it's worth 620. But let's say the seller thinks it's worth 650. Mr. Seller, I understand why you think your house is worth 650. Hold on. Sneezing. Bless you. And the truth is, in this market, it very well might be because this your house does have a lot of amenities and features that the other house, <coughs> that the other house, well, proof that the we collective don't, bless you from all of our listeners. <laughs> proof that we don't add it. Yeah. Um, a proof that I do what I don't want to do and I don't want to do it at the <laughs> highest mean, level too. Yes. I mean, I can literally feel my fever. I you know. know, I can. So, Mr. Seller, I appreciate the fact that you think your house is worth six fifty, even though the comps are telling us it's worth uh, a, a lower number. But after having seen your house, I can understand why you would feel it was worth that much more uh, because it is exceptional. And these are really important things to say, guys. And Mr. Seller, I want you to know that I really believe in your house and I would love it to sell this house for you because I'm confident that I can get the highest price on the market. It's an exceptional property. It's really, I, I just love the improvements that you've made. I'm really impressed. You guys have to sell the seller on the fact that you want the listing and you can't just basically take an analytical approach. If you don't sell the seller and you don't ask for the listing in, a, in the literal sense, in the direct way, they're not going to list it with you. And there, I remember, I'll tell you guys a real quick side story. Julie and I, I'm, I remember the losses. I don't remember all the wins, but I remember when Julie and I it was our first year in the business and we killed on this listing appointment, headed out of the park. Now it, it may have been our second year, but at this point we'd sort of gotten our jib jab down. So we were really effective. And um, I remember we lost a listing to a brand new agent. I knew she was brand new and she had no pre-listing pack, nothing, nothing, nothing. But what had happened is, is Julie and I got into the habit of taking three and four listings a week. We'd gotten complacent with actually closing. So this is how we learned a lot of the things to tell you guys not to mm -hmm. do. So I asked why we didn't get the listing because I thought for sure we got it. We even sent flowers afterwards to the seller. And the seller said, well, she asked for the listing. I know. Ouch. And right? I remember, I'll tell you yeah. another one I remember we lost. And it was... Um, uh, the seller said, I didn't think you believed in my house. Yep. You remember that one? Yeah. And we had other ones. The, the, the converse of that is we also had a lot of them say, well, you were the only ones that seemed to be enthusiastic about the right. sale of my house. So I can go both ways. Your default is always massive energy and enthusiasm. If they like it, you love it. Well, but what I'm, know? what I'm relaying though, yeah. is the importance of doing what you don't want to do when yeah. you don't want to do it at the highest level. So we may have been going on listing appointments and we may have been tired or maybe not necessarily as frosty as, and you know, as essentially as professional as we normally would have been. So we are doing what we didn't want to do when we didn't want to do it, but we weren't doing it at the at highest the level. level. Yeah. And that's the reason we were losing. You guys see where, um, where our background and our education and what we tell you guys to do comes from. <laughs> Doing it. I, so doing it right. You want to learn how to do, get better at push-ups, do push-ups. So, and so here's how you uh, round the bend with that seller. Now, Mr. Seller. So I a hundred percent agree that your house will, uh, could sell very much more 
than what the most recent sale comps were. I believe in the house. I'd love to list the house for you. I 100% know I get this property sold for you. It's fantastic. But let's agree that after two weeks or 10 showings, that if we don't have a, a verified, you know, written offer on the property, that we'll explore repositioning the house in the market so that it correctly reflects the buyer's expectations. Okay. Now I just chalked that full, a whole bunch of pearls, and I hope you guys were paying attention. If you tell the seller that after two weeks or 10 showings, you're going to lower the price, you're not going to take the listing in a market like this. They're going to list it with somebody else. If you tell the, if you take too dominant of approach with sellers when it's so competitive, uh, when they're in a lot of markets, they're very you know overconfident, you're not going to take the listing. You have to take an approach of being a little bit passive, even especially for those of you out there like myself who have a tendency to be overly uh, uh, direct. So hopefully this all makes sense to you guys. Julie, do you want to do one more point? Yes. I'm uh, notifying Tom about our internet situation. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have the next point is going to be. Oh, yeah. How are you doing Facebook Live today? Uh, somebody else is going to do it. Ah, got it. The other coaches are Rochelle. All right. So, okay. So the, the wrap up to that is don't ever allow the seller to know more about the comps than you do or to be more enthusiastic about the sale of it than you are. All right. Number four, you don't know the competition or the neighborhood well enough to speak with authority. So here's the secret to solving that. Preview the competition. Know the average days on the market, not just for your town or city, but for the actual neighborhood. Micro neighborhoods can be hot or not, or varying degrees of hot. Know the list to sell price ratio for the latest comparables. Know that if it's going up or down or remaining stable. Most markets, probably 90% of them are still going up right now, but you have to know by how much. Some neighborhoods are, are getting, I think NAR did a report yesterday Year over year, we're now up to, on average, 24% higher pricing. Okay. The worst situation you can be caught in when you're talking with a seller. Now, remember, guys, we teach you to uh, send your pre-listing pack ahead of time, send with the seller survival guide, which is the list of questions. But we also want you to send the listing paperwork, and we also want you to send the CMA. We want you to send that all ahead of time so that all of those things the sellers had a chance to pick through prior to you getting there. That means you're going to be doing a lot of work prior to going on the listing appointment. And then, but the point of it is, is that they're already going to have gone through everything and there's probably going to be zero, um, you know, stress in the room when you get there uh, because they're already going to have satisfied themselves about every aspect that would normally cause stress. They've seen the listing paperwork. They've seen your sample net sheets. They've seen your, the CMA, they've seen all these things. Uh, but on, I forget what I was going to say uh, on this, um, the CMA, you were just, or you were just saying. It's the Dayquil, man. <laughs> I know. Well, the point was that you don't know the neighborhood well enough. Oh, you don't know the I remember now. Well Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, absolutely, positively, don't be stuck in a situation where you're not going to know a, comp, a house that you're using as a comp. If you're sitting there and they're asking you and you've given them six or ten comps to use when coming up with a hypothetical price range on their house and you don't know all of them, you're going to look like a jackass and not get the listing. Right. And you're at a huge advantage in this marketplace. Now, I realize that in a hot seller's market, not all agents are doing virtual tours, but at least take the damn time to look at the pictures. Right? Yeah, I mean, it does matter, right? So. A comp that's all original, that's beat to heck, that's maybe been a rental its entire life, is different than a recently rehabbed, basically shows like new construction. Maybe they're even a model match and you wouldn't know the difference from the outside. You've got to look at pictures. Yep. And sometimes yeah. you're in one of these older subdivisions um, that were, you know, it's basically oh, there's 10 different floor plans. But over time, a lot of them have gotten remodeled. And you're saying, well, that's the Oakhurst model. I can tell by looking at the front of it. You know, they call that the elevation, right? So by looking at the elevation, I can tell it's, uh, you know, the Oakhurst model. Well, the seller was over that house, you know, last December going to a Christmas party. And that house has like a million dollar backyard with a huge extension. And you didn't know about it when right. it sold. So you got to be really careful that you do your homework. Again, Essentially, don't go if you don't know. That's one of Julie's it, rules. It, it's in Harris rules. A, it's an easy advantage to get. Yeah, totally. This is one of the most, this is for every agent, but especially for our newbie agents who are very much not confident in their pricing. It's one of the easiest ways you can fix that is to preview in person as much as you can, but certainly online. Call the listing agent if you're not sure about it. You know, maybe it's a, a 90 day old close and you just want more information. Work together. You know, you have to be the professional. It's also a great way to lose when you aren't knowing that kind of knowledge because somebody else comes in and knows all of those houses and knows all of the differences. The big takeaway is, and I know the number one reason that many of you don't go out and try to be listing agents is because you're not competitive. It's not fear of being competitive or it's just you aren't competitive. You know you're going to lose because you're not prepared. You're not a professional. And I'm. this is the truth, right? So why don't you 
learn how to actually be professional. Why don't you just employ the system that we've already created for you? Pre-qualify, ask all the questions, follow all the techniques that we teach you to use, send the pre-listing pack, use our listing presentation. Our listing presentation takes about 15 minutes. It's called the Sharpie Close. It's the simplest listing presentation ever. That's, it's simple, right? And then you follow our entire system and you're going to get consistent results. Don't plug into our system and become a coaching client and try to improve it. You know, the eight houses that you sold in your career on the listing side does not make you an expert enough to start editing and changing our listing presentation. If you want to get consistent results, follow the proven system, follow the path that works, follow the path that's going to get you to the top of the mountain. So when you do join our coaching program, don't take the time to try to re-engineer anything. Just do it exactly the way we teach you to do it. Just get to work. It's actually easier. Totally. And especially after they understand the system, you know, we've got a seven step listing process. Once you get used to actually doing that process, it's streamlined, it's easier. And when you stop having different rules for different people, to our previous points, you know, if it's your best friend, you're not going to bother pre-qualifying them. Stop doing that. Do it exactly the same way every single time. And you won't fall into some of these traps. And there's more, by the way. We're going to continue this uh, next week. Well, this is a great topic. I think so. I mean, hopefully this saves them from some of the pain that we experienced that you know, some other agents have experienced because this is all fixable. Well, as I'm going through these points with you and I'm thinking, how are they receiving this information? Mm -hmm. What I'm thinking of is I would be feeling excited Mm -hmm. because now what Tim and Julie have just told me are all the weak spots of all the soft spots of my competitors. Yes. Tim and Julie have just told me all the places where my competitors are probably going to be complacent, where I can essentially uh, take advantage of their, um, Mm -hmm. you know, thoughtlessness, basically. And I think that's a very interesting perspective because it's true. If you just employ the system that we've created for you, if you actually understand that most other people have no system at all, that's going to be the thing that will blow you away the first time you realize it. Um, you're going to go on a listing appointment. You know, Bob and Betty, who dominate this particular market, and everyone puts them up on a pedestal. You're going to get the listing away from them. You're going to ask the seller. You know, you're going to be in a competitive situation. You know, you're Bill No Name, but you beat Bob and Betty, right? Bob and Betty are, you know, they've been dominating this market since 1962, and you know, everyone thinks they're the greatest thing. And you just, a lot of agents don't even try to compete in that market for listings because they're so intimidated by these two agents. You go in there and you beat them, and then you're going to discover that not only do they not have a sales system, they have no sales presentation. They have no pre-listing pack. They've gotten to the point where they're so deep in the weeds with complacency because the market has just essentially gotten easier for them. Yeah, and then Those you add mar- on that, they show up late. They don't take their shoes off at the door. Right. You know? I mean, they might have been all that before they showed up. Then right. they show up. Exactly. Well, and that's those markets excite Julie and I because those are the markets that are ripe for disruption. Mm-hmm. And, and when you go into a market like that and you start taking uh, listings away from these experienced, grizzled veteran agents, they tend have a tendency not to basically buckle down and get their acts back together. They just slowly start to fade and you slowly start to become more dominant. And I'll give you guys a real good example. Um, Rob Johnson in Greenwich, Connecticut. You know, Rob, Julie and I coached him since basically he got into real estate. And Rob has got, uh, he's been in real estate for six or seven years. Greenwich, Connecticut is one of the most competitive, old, blue blood, you know, the toughest markets you could ever possibly imagine to break into, basically. Um, some of these, uh, the houses that he sells, some of them are, yeah, I bet his average sale price is like $4 million. I know on our last coaching call, he just put a lot in contract that he double ended for $7 million. He listed it on the, you guys get the point. Not an easy market to get into. But when I started coaching Rob uh, years ago, we did a little anal- uh, analysis on the market. We knew who our competitors were. We we did a you know we figured out what their strengths and their weaknesses were. We ascertained that basically uh, where he could start to essentially you know uh, pick up where they're leaving off. And sure enough, that's what he did. And we started becoming more competitive. He just started being pro- he was a professional. All the things we just told you about was what was happening in Greenwich, Connecticut. And this he's probably going to do. Your listeners, are you are you listening, listeners? He's probably going to do two hundred million dollars this year it's in real estate point. sales. He's going to make at least five million dollars in real estate commissions this year. And he's only been in real estate for six or seven years. Rob he's Johnson going to keep most in of Greenwich, it. Connecticut. Oh yeah, he has one assistant, yeah. Lisa. It's awesome. Yeah, Lisa Stuckart. So I hope he, he keeps Lisa happy. Oh, he does. Good. Yeah, she's very well paid. Yeah. Yeah. And but he 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 does work with two or three buyers at a time, but most of his business is listings. He is a textbook Tim and Julie Harris a luxury real estate coaching client. And we have people that are on the other end of the spectrum too as far as price range. They're all following the exact system that we teach. It works if you're selling a mobile home and wherever mobile homes are, all the way up to very expensive properties in Greenwich, Connecticut. That's what the benefit of joining our coaching program is. Go to timandjulieharris.com, click on Premier Coaching. I'm sorry, click on Coaching, click on Premier Coaching, 
and you can join for around $100 per month. And you get a daily semi-private coaching call. You get our complete system. This isn't an edited system. This is a full suite. Everything we ever talk about is there waiting for you when you join Premier Coaching. Indeed. So I'm going to go take some more DayQuil. Yes. And uh, I'm, I'm going to starting go make to get sure our coaches are handling the Premier. Exactly. So. And you guys have a fantastic weekend. If you need us for anything, please remember you can just text me directly at 512-758-0206. 512-758-0206. Uh, we're always looking for show ideas. We're always looking for feedback. Oh, and we did put a call out for you guys to give us some reviews on iTunes. I really appreciate the iTunes reviews we got. If you haven't done that, your price of admission for the podcast going forward is a five-star review. So go over to iTunes. You're probably listening to us on iTunes right now and just uh, five-star review and just put in a couple lines. It really does do us a great. So I'll tell you guys a little inside information. Nobody knows how iTunes goes about deciding where you are in the on the uh, podcasting charts, right? The belief is it's the number of review. It's the number of five-star reviews where people leave comments. That's what determines how hard, how high you are on the uh, page ranks. It's just for fun, basically. But if you are a brand new podcast and you happen to get like a hundred. Uh, five star reviews and uh, you know people put in a couple lines of positive comments. You're actually going to beat out in your particular category the most entrenched podcast that there is that normally has a billion uh, you know downloads because you had the most downloads or I'm sorry you had the most reviews and uh, five star ratings in a short period of time. You actually climbed the charts and it's kind of a funny thing. We've experienced that a number of times, but we would sincerely appreciate that you would support what our mission here is to be of service to all of you guys by giving us a five-star review on iTunes and a, a few lines of praise, assuming you think we're worthy. <laughs> exactly. And in the meantime, go sell a house. Have a fantastic weekend, guys. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.